house. We thank you for uh, uh, this apostle and this first lady and this congregation, God, and this ministry, oh God, that you have blessed, oh God, to, to make a difference, Lord, in this community and throughout Georgia and across the world, God. We, Father, we thank you, God, for, for, for what you are doing and what you've already done. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, when I think of your goodness and all Well, let's open our Bible. We're going to look into the Word. 
of God, uh, Pastor asked me to preach. I have some some things in my heart to share with you already, and uh, we will uh, let the Lord speak to us out of the Book of Luke, chapter eight. The Book of Luke, chapter eight, verse four. I want to honor the time because I know we we have a set time, right? So we want to. We want to honor that time. Luke chapter 8, if you have it, can, you, can we please stand for a reading of the word? If you have it, say amen. amen. Luke chapter 8 and verse 40. And it reads, So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man, a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet, and begged him to come to his house. For he had only a daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged around him. Now a woman, having a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow, her, her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? Who touched me? And when all the night, Peter and those with him said, Master, the, mount, the multitude's throng and press you. And you say, you touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out from me. And when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. And she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Somebody say immediately. Immediately. And he said to her daughter, he said to her, daughter, be of good cheer, cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has given me to, to talk to you this morning on the subject of intimacy with God. Yeah. Intimacy with God. Come on, Mike. Hallelujah. And as we consider the text, I want to share a little, little bit of a testimony with you uh, that happened with my wife and I a few weeks ago. Uh, we are now empty nesters. Any other empty nesters here? Your kids are grown and gone. Praise the Lord for an empty nest, right? When you have an empty nest, you don't have to keep any bedtime and, you know, have those type of rules. Uh, when our kids were at home, we used to basically try to get them in bed by set time and then be in bed ourselves so that we can be up with them in the morning and get, get them off. Anyway, we're empty nesters now. And, uh, for me, I'm a night person. I like to be up at night. I don't, uh, any other night people here? I like to be up at night. I'm not an early riser, typically. I get up if I have to. <laughs> but uh, if I can push a meeting back like that 530 prayer, amen, I'm going to try to push it back. Amen. I'll come out to church to pray at night. You want to have a night prayer? I, I, I love that. I, uh, you know, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. prayer, at midnight. I, amen. I'm all in on that. And uh, So anyway, being a night uh, this particular night, I came to bed about uh, 1, one thirty in the morning. And uh, now my wife is on the opposite schedule. Uh, she's on the opposite schedule. She, she's an early riser. She, she likes to get up sometimes in the middle of the night and cook and clean. I don't understand it. Sisters, why you want to clean a house in the middle of the night? Uh, she wants to do that kind of stuff. She cooks and cleans. She'll do, do homework or she'll pray, all those types of things that make no sense to me to do in the middle of the night. My thing is just don't be noisy when you're doing it. <laughs> Amen. I'm trying to sleep. It's 2 a.m. and you're banging pots. But the, the, the smells coming out of the kitchen are pretty good too, though, because she'll start cooking dinner for the next night, sometimes in the middle of the night too. Uh, but, but anyway, um, I can normally count on her coming back to bed at, at some, some hour of the night. And for those of us that are married, you know how it is when, you're, when your wife isn't in the bed with you, you know, you, you normally are feeling around on the other side, right? You're trying to, you know, you're trying to 
reach out for her and we want her to be there. And I know that I can count on her being out of the bed for a certain amount of time and then coming back to bed. Uh, well, this particular night, she stayed up all night. And so I really didn't sleep well because I kept tossing and turning looking for her. Um, you know, and, and so uh, she stayed up and the next morning we were in the kitchen making breakfast and, and I asked her, you know, how come you didn't come back to bed? You know, I thought it might, she might have been lying or something. Well, my snoring kept her up, you know, she normally tells that lie, I don't believe that. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't snore. I don't, at least I don't hear myself snore. <laughs> Amen. But she snores. And she denies that she snores. But anyway, she didn't come back to bed. The next morning I'm asking her, how come you didn't come back to bed? You know, was everything all right? Long story short, she basically shared with me that she had a migraine. She was having a migraine and she decided to get up. Because every time she laid down, there was pressure. And it was hard to sleep. So she got up. And typical for my wife, uh, she's, she's an intercessor. Uh, she began to pray. And uh, any, any, anybody that knows an intercessor knows that when an intercessor begins to pray, uh, you and me, we pray, we get a good 30, 45 minutes, maybe an hour in, and we good. Amen? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Those that are not intercessors, do you, can you relate? You, your prayer time is not going to be like the prayer time of an intercessor. For my wife, an hour is just getting warmed up. Matter of fact, uh, when we were pastoring, I would not let my wife lead opening prayer during the service because it was just opening prayer. <laughs> Amen? She wouldn't want to make it a whole intercession, intercession service. Uh, so this particular night, she was up all night and she was in prayer and in the Word. And that she was sharing this testimony with me about how she was just up all night, just enjoying the presence of God and in prayer and just loving on God and spending time with God. And, um, and um, how during that time, the migraine basically had gone away. She, you know, she got deliverance from that. She, she got, the Lord set her free from it. Uh, just as a result of that, just that time that she was spending with God. And um, as she was sharing this testimony with me, uh, like most husbands do, I'm going to admit this, um, I really wasn't all the way in with the conversation. Amen. Brothers, you know what I'm talking about? Don't admit it because your wife is here. I can admit it. My wife's not here. Amen. Sisters, you know what I'm talking about, though. Uh, you, can, you can be talking to your husband, and we in, but we really not in. We, we listening, but we When she was talking to me, I was talking to God. And I was listening to her, but I was also talking to the Lord at the same time. And, and, and so I was in and out, blanking in and out, and I was really captured by the zeal behind her testimony because she was talking about how God had healed her um, during this time. And, and, and as I'm having this inner monologue with God, well, let me put it like this, as I'm having this inner monologue, Amen. You ever you ever have one of those conversations? You just kind of think you're talking to yourself. And, and really, though, I was talking to God, and God spoke to me in the middle of this this monologue I was having with myself. Because the thing that I said to myself was, "That's beautiful, but I I can't stay up all night in prayer." Are you, are you with me? I said, that's beautiful. I mean, I was loving her testimony. It was a beautiful testimony. And, and, and I was receiving what she was saying. And I was praising the Lord with her. But at the same time, I was saying to myself, I can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? You ever hear somebody's testimony about how they pressed their way? And you think to yourself, I can't do that. That's, I, mm, that's not me. And that's where I was with God. And, 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 and where, where I was with myself, I mean, six to seven hours in prayer, uh, God, I, that, that ain't in me. Yeah. 
Amen? Amen. And listen to this. This is what the Holy Spirit said to me uh, when, I, when I made that, that statement within myself. He said to me, he said, you can't do that because you're too transactional with me. Did you hear what the Lord said? He said, you can't do that because you're too transactional with me. Now, I'm going to tell you, Pastor, when, when, when God said that, my knees literally buckled. Literally. I was, I was, I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was standing at the kitchen sink, and I was doing something at the sink, and if you ever, if you're a person that is used to hearing from God, and God says something that's a word of correction for you, uh, if you are, if you have a, a heart towards God, something like that will buckle you. Something like that will take you down, because I thought I was in a good place with God. Come on, man. Come on. Yes. Come on, But God said to me, you're too transactional with me. With transactional, God, what do you mean I'm too transactional? And, 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 and here I was, look, thinking I'm in a good place with God. I'm saved. I'm a man of God. I pray. I read my Bible. I'm a preacher of the word. How can you say that I'm too transactional with you? That's what brings us back to the, to the text here. And that's what brings us
mindset instead of stepping forward into deeper worship with me. Are you seeing the word of the Lord? Amen. Out for you to catch my balance to hold me up. 
Come on, somebody. Why are you in the crowd? Why are you in the crowd? They didn't know why they were there. They were just there. If you're going to be a true worshiper of God, you need to know why you're in this house. You don't need to just be here because it's Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, and somebody got you up out the bed to go. I mean, I appreciate that you're here. Amen. I want you to be here, but don't spend your life, don't spend your Sunday in a place week after week after week, month after month, year after year, with never digging into why you're there. I got to know. Before I got saved, people used to always try to get me to church, you know, go to church. And my thing always was, before I got saved, I'm not going to church because I'm not playing with God. Come on, somebody. You can't come to church just because somebody's trying to drag you out to the house. And again, you're welcome. I want you to be here. But if you're going to be here, discover the purpose. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Jesus, show me who you are. Jesus, let me connect with you. Connect with your purpose. Because see, this woman with the issue of blood, she had purpose down in her spirit. There was purpose in her spirit. She knew she needed something from God. She needed and she desired something from God. And that desire is what pushed her, not just to reach as a member of the crowd, not just to, to allow herself to be moved back and forth uh, from direction to direction. Uh, That's why she's not here today. She, she, she loved to be at home. Amen. I ain't going to hate on her. She don't hate on me. We reconnect when I get home. I'll see you when I get back. God bless you. Amen. Uh, uh, but a few years ago, I was traveling across the country and I was up in, uh, up in Ohio and uh, I had been watching uh, uh, Rod Parsley's ministry on TV for many years. And uh, the time that I was up in Ohio, Rod Parsley, uh, who knows who Rod Parsley is? At the time that I was traveling through, uh, I was going, going from Pittsburgh to Chicago and I was driving and uh, he had his conference. So I planned my trip to be in uh, Columbus on one of the days of his conference. And uh, I got to the conference. Watch this. Watch this. Church, huge church, mega church, probably 10, 10,000 people or more were at this event in a big cornfield out there in the middle of nowhere in, in, in central Ohio. I pull up to the church pastor, and literally, the, the, the parking lot was so full, you had to park and have a shovel bring you up to the church. Yeah. I mean, you had to park way out there, way, you hear what I'm saying? You had to park. So in other words, if you wanted to be in that service, if you wanted to receive what God I get up there in the parking and I park way out there and the shuttle takes me up to the door. Now watch this, uh, uh, when I get to the door, when I get to the door of the church, there were people sitting outside. There was no room in the service. So people were literally sitting outside the church. This is how many people were there. I mean, the, the, the building but even at that, there were people sitting out in the front, and they wouldn't go in. And in my spirit, I said to myself, I have traveled 3,000 miles. Come on, now. I've come 3,000 miles to connect with God. I need a word from the Lord. And that night, Marguerite Shambach was preaching. I need a word from the Lord. And I came on the night that I knew the man of God was going to deliver a word that was going to smooth and I made a decision that I don't care who's sitting outside, I'm going on the inside. I am going in. I came too far to turn back. I am not settling for the sidewalk. You've got to be that determined about your purpose and about what God. 
service. Yeah. Still multitudes out there on the sidewalk. Yeah. Pastor, I got into the service. Yeah. I was in World Harvest Church. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I got into the service, I was sitting kind of in the balcony. I was in the back. I was in the balcony. You hear what I'm saying to you? Listen, church, because God has a word for you. I was in the back. I was in the balcony. And I, and I loved it. Beautiful worship. Wonderful word. God delivered some amazing things into my life. Spoke some things about my destiny. And, and when it came time for the altar call. Mm. Come on. We got the press through this crowd. We got the press through this crowd. I was sitting in the back. I was in the very back. And when it came Wow. 
drawing around you, pushing against you. What, what, what do you mean somebody touched me? You need to get an understanding. Jesus wasn't talking about the touch. He was talking about the touch. Uh -huh. He was talking about the touch. He was talking about the touch that drew something out of him. He was talking about the touch that drew on that anointing. Are you trying to touch him? Yes. Amen? Yes. So, so the, the scripture in verse 45 says, Peter, he, he, he tried to, he said, the throngs are, 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 are pressing against you. What do you mean you touch me? And, uh, what Peter, the thing you got to understand here is that what Peter said was a true statement, but it wasn't truth. It wasn't, it wasn't what the reality was. It was not the truth. Yes, many people were touching him, but Peter did not make the connection that there was virtue, there was Amen? Because when, when God was speaking to me, and I'm, I'm still talking about intimacy and how God was working with me, when God was speaking to me, I was troubled in my spirit. And I said to God, God, how is it that I'm, I'm, I'm missing? What am I missing, God? What am I missing? Because I, I, I do pray, I do, uh, uh, you know, worship, and I spend time in my word. And, 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 and God was saying to me that the focus of your time was becoming more about what you wanted from me. Wow. Wow. It was becoming more about the transaction. God, I need you. Amen. God, I, God, I desire. God, I want. God, answer this prayer. How many of us have ever called on God? God, if you, if you get me out of this, I promise. I promise, God. If, if you let me wake up tomorrow, I promise I'll never do it again. If you deliver me out of this, I promise. I promise, God. I promise. We may It's more about the worship. See, my life is coming to a place where it was starting to just be, uh, Lord, you know what I need and meet my need and thank you, Lord. I was saying thank you, but it wasn't a, a thank you, amen. It was, it was a quick thank you because I had other things to do. I had places to go and people to see. And I had to back up and realize that I need to be spend some time with God and just worship and bless him and praise him, not because I need anything from him, but just because he's God. Yeah. Amen. As I close, no problem with meeting your needs. God is such a good, loving, and awesome, and gracious God that the Bible says that if you ask, he'll give it to you. Yes. He has no problem with meeting your need, with answering your prayer. But you know what God desires more than just meeting your need? Yeah, yeah. He desires fellowship. Yes, he does. Yes. He desires fellowship. He wants us sometimes just to hang out with him. Amen? Amen? Just hang out with God. Hang out with God. I, I remember, you know, my wife, my wife often says, when we first met, you know, I'm, I'm the talkative one and she's the quiet one. And, and when we first met, I used to always talk, 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 you know, 100 miles a minute. And one time my wife uh, stopped me in the middle of talking. She said, you know what? You already got it. You don't need to say nothing else. <laughs> right? And what, what, you know what the lesson was? When you're in a relationship, sometimes you just hang out together. Yeah. You ain't got to impress nobody. You ain't got to, you know, you ain't got to try to win God. You already have him. You gotta learn how to relax in his presence. Lord, just to be close to you. Jesus, I just want to be with you. I just want to spend time with you. I just want to hang out with you. You know what I like to do? I like to put my headphones on and sometimes I go for a walk or I'm out working in the yard cutting the grass or whatever and, and I'm listening to my worship music and I just begin to worship while I'm walking or worship while I'm working. Amen. Just spending time with God. Just hanging out with Him. Preach, sir. Preach. This is what intimacy. 
intimacy is all about. How much time do you make for God? Do you make time just to hang out with Him, just to fellowship with Him? Or are you only coming to God when you need something? Amen? That's what God desires. See, when my wife, when she got up at 1 o'clock in the morning to pray, yeah, she asked God to heal her. But you know what? If she didn't get healed, guess what? She was going to continue in prayer. Because I know her. I know that's just who she is. In other words, she wasn't just saying, well, God, if you heal me, I'll continue to pray. She was praying, and, and after she asked for, the, for the, uh, the healing from the headache, she just began to just worship and just spend time with God. And she stopped, and she even told me in her testimony, she stopped even thinking about the headache. She wasn't even thinking about it before she knew it. It was God. That's what intimacy is all about. Amen. So as we stand together, can we all stand, Pastor? Amen. Can we all stand together? The question, church, is about a relationship with God. I've been saved for 32 years, and guess what? I had to get checked on this. Just because you've been saved for a while, don't mean that you are locked with everything. Some people think, oh, I, I've been in the church all Listen, I don't care how long you've been saved. If the Lord is checking you and he's, and he's showing you some things about yourself that you need to get corrected, amen, surrender your will to his. Have a heart towards God and say, you know what, God, I'm falling short. Lord, I need to get this right with you. I need to, to fix this in my life. There are people and there are things that are part of my life that are keeping me from worshiping you the way that I'm supposed to. Who do I need to break away from? What are the places that I'm spending my time that I need to let go of so that I can get closer to God? Time wasters. Time wasters. God shared an analogy with me uh, through a Facebook post I saw. There was a jar, and in this jar, there were ping pong balls. And also in this jar was sand. And the ping pong balls represented your purpose, the things that were most important. And the sand represented the things that are time wasters, that keep you, amen, from connecting with what's most important. And as God began to show me this illustration, he, he showed, the, and, and the illustration even showed, when you put the sand in the jar first, you can't fit the ping pong balls. Uh huh. You can't fit the pain. You can't fit what's most important when you're spending your time on things that are timeless. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. There's some things that I need to eliminate out of my life. Uh huh. That are wasting my time. There are some people. Uh huh. That I need to in relation. Listen. I I, I know we all have friends that we love. But you know what? We have family members that we love. But you know what? If those family members and friends are keeping you from moving closer to, to, to God and God's purpose and destiny for your life, guess what you need to do? They need to become like sand. In other words, you know what the illustration showed me? Is that if you put the ping pong balls in the jar first, uh -huh, uh -huh. not saying that you have to get rid of the sand, but you put the ping pong balls in the jar first, the things that are most important, then you can pour the sand in, and guess what the sand does? It fits in around the ping pong ball. God, sometimes God is not saying that you have to get rid of things in your life. You just have to reprioritize what's most important. What's most important? Father, I thank you for this opportunity to speak your word to your people today. I pray, God, that your word is his heart and target in our hearts. Lord, as your people consider what's most important in their lives, Lord, may we all desire a closer walk with you, oh God. Touch our hearts, Lord. Those that are here, Lord, that are struggling in their relationship with you, oh God, that are pushing you away, draw them closer by your word, by your spirit today. Minister to the needs of your people. Touch our hearts and our lives, oh God. Help us all, God, to walk closer to you. Because you are what's most important in our lives. In Jesus' name.
name. Lord, I, I, I just pray for those that may be struggling here that are bound, Lord, like this woman with the issue of blood. She was bound, oh God, uh, by a sickness, oh God, that no one else can cure but you. Father, if there are those that are bound here, Father, may they reprioritize their lives to put you first. Put their deliverance first. Put their healing first. Not, not their healing and everything else or everybody else or everything. first, oh God. Following your directions to get completely well first. In Jesus' name, Lord, touch, oh God. Set your people free. In Jesus' name. If you're here this morning and, and, uh, and you, you're, you're struggling, you've been struggling with your relationship, you realize that, you know, you need to get closer to God, you, 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 you drifted away. Amen? 32 years saved, and guess what? I was starting to drift. 32 years, pastor, uh, walking in ministry, guess what? Still started to drift. Uh-huh. It can happen. I'm no better than you. But if that's you today and you want prayer, you want us to agree with you in prayer, would you come to